Number one. This story belongs to a friend of mine. He told me this once, and I simply have to tell it. My friend is of Wakino heritage, a Native American tribe who settled in the Pacific Northwest coast. He was quite the character. For one, he was a whopping 6'10", and had the blackest eyes you could imagine. He always had this frowning face going on, which made him even more intimidating. He was everything but a bad guy. In fact, he was the most gentle of giants. He was working at a gas station up north back in 1992, and he pretty much always worked the graveyard shift from 11 to 7. Business wasn't exactly booming at night, so he usually watched TV and read magazines between customers, and they were few and far between. The area he worked in was deeply associated with all things Native American. There was a potent sense of pride in the surrounding communities, but also a very distinct presence of superstition and old traditions. My friend was no exception. He was a firm believer in the ways of the old. This made his encounter even more terrifying. One night he was sitting as usual watching TV when a customer entered the gas station. The customer paid for his gas, a pack of smokes, and some soda, and returned to his car. Nothing unusual, but as my friend looked out the window toward the customer's car, he spotted what looked like a huge dog sitting by the edge of the woods. Now, the window is located on the side of the building, some distance from the sliding door, overlooking the pumps and the roof covering it. On the sides of the roof are pretty strong halogen lights, which shine into the gas station. This gives the gas station not only an eerie lighting, with the blinds casting long striped shadows, but also blinds the teller to an extent. As he peered through the window, trying to focus on the dog, it was gone. He didn't think much of it, even if it was a wolf. He was inside, and wolves don't tend to rob gas stations at night, but this wolf was huge. He brushed it off and returned to his mindless watching of the TV. A couple of hours go by, and not a single customer has entered since the last one. He was just about to refill some condiments when he heard a huge thud coming from the back. It wasn't inside, but it came from the back, behind the building where they kept the garbage. The gas station had been visited before by scavenging homeless, but my friend didn't really care. It was just garbage. Let them take it. The sound kept getting louder. He decided to grab a flashlight and a gun from the office and circle around back to tell whoever had ventured there to leave. His presence alone would have scared anyone off, but he wanted to feel safe just in case. Walking past the window he was just sitting by, as he turned the corner, he shines the light towards the dumpsters. As the cone of light hits the dumpsters, my friend instantly drops the flashlight and the gun. It was the huge dog he saw before, scourging through the trash. Something was different about it. It clearly stood on his hind legs, reaching the same height as himself. The creature's eyes had been glowing in the light of the flashlight, making it even more terrifying. He ran inside the gas station. Thankfully, he wasn't followed. He locked the door and stayed inside the rest of the night, and quit the next day. My friend is still convinced that he saw a skinwalker that night, which is a terrifying and dangerous shape-shifting being of sorts, and a common occurrence in Native American folklore. Number 2 I have no evidence, but I promise you, this story is real. I've always been a bit of a skeptic, ever since I was a kid. Scary stories don't faze me. Horror games never frighten me. And whenever I hear something weird at night, I instantly assume it's something normal, like an animal moving around, or just the house settling. Despite this, something very unsettling happened to me the other day, and I'm really not sure what to make of it. I think it's the first time in years I've been genuinely afraid. I live in a forested area in the U.S., me and my girlfriend live in a large cabin, and although there are roads nearby, our nearest neighbors are at least a kilometer away. We also have two cats, one of which sleeps in the bedroom with us, while the other one goes out at night, 
and does whatever cats do when they're out of sight. Anyway, I like to stay up late at night and sleep into the morning, whereas my girlfriend's an early bird. It was about one in the morning. I was watching some crappy TV show in the living room while my girlfriend slept in the bedroom. I was beginning to grow tired when I heard something outside near the cat flap. For clarity, our cat flap uses an electronic chip, so only our cats can use it. I assumed it was just one of the cats trying to get into or leave the house, and I ignored it. Then I heard it again. It sounded like something thudding against the door. It happened several times at random intervals. I lost my patience and decided to go open the door. Clearly, the cat was having trouble getting in. I never thought about it at the time, but it was weird because we fed our cats well, and they were very lean rather than chubby. I passed the bedroom and peered in as I walked past to see if my girlfriend had heard the noises. She was fast asleep, but the cat that sleeps with us was staring at the window. I called her name. Nothing. She just kept staring. I shrugged it off and kept heading towards the kitchen. The back doors were through there, by the way. Anyway, I reached the back door and saw a dark shape through the translucent flap. I sighed, expecting the cat to be out there. It took me a moment to open the door, and I saw the cat tense up on the other side. When I opened the door fully, I froze. It wasn't my cat. Whatever it was had started moving before I opened it up all the way, and I only caught a glimpse of a distorted figure. It kind of resembled a dog, and it was bolting, and I mean it was absolutely pelting it. I freaked out and slammed the door shut. What the hell was that? I wasn't sure. My natural skepticism kicked in, and I assumed it was probably just some animal, and I had merely startled it. Perhaps the darkness made it appear larger than it actually was. Nevertheless, I was creeped out, and I decided to go back to sleep. As I slipped in the bed, I realized something horrifying. My second cat was asleep on the rug. It took me a while to get to sleep that night. Everything seemed normal until a couple of hours later. I awoke to a strange feeling of dread. Something wasn't right. My family was fast asleep. I held my breath. I heard something creaking by the door. It sounded too loud to be one of the cats. It was as if a person was walking about. I reached towards my bedside cabinet and I flicked on the lamp. The room was illuminated and I saw something standing just outside the open door, staring at me. It was the same twisted figure I had spotted outside earlier. It wasn't very tall, maybe a little over five feet, but it was its face that scared me the most. I only caught a glimpse of it, but what I saw will stay with me forever. It resembled a dog, but with an elongated face and almost human-like eyes. You know that weird distorted snarl that hounds pull when they're pissed off? It had that expression. I instantly started yelling profanities as I scrambled backwards, trying to straighten up. The creature turned and sprinted down the hall. I heard it dash outside and go past the window behind us, just above the headboard. I managed to look out as my girlfriend started to wake up and panic. We both caught a glimpse of whatever the hell this thing was as it dashed off into the woods near our home. Grabbing my trusty shotgun from beneath the bed, as well as a couple of rounds from the ammo box that sits next to it, I ran out of the room in my underwear and rounded into the kitchen. The door was open. My stupid ass forgot to lock it when I saw it earlier. I haven't seen it since. We still live in our cabin, but I've since bought sturdy locks for all the main doors and windows in the house and I always check the exit points at night. I also go to bed a bit earlier than I used to, so I'm asleep when the freaks of the night start to wake up. I've read a bunch of forums, and the only thing I can compare it to, based on what I saw, is a skinwalker. Number 3 I don't consider myself to be a superstitious person. Okay, sure. I get a kick out of horoscope every once in a while. My boyfriend and I like to humor the idea of spirits and poltergeists, and how we would haunt people when we died and came back as ghosts. 
In fact, my boyfriend refuses to go anywhere near a Ouija board. Refuses to even touch one. I blame all the crummy horror movies he watches. Why even attempt? He would say. Why would you want to taunt evil ghosts like that? Ghosts never play fair, and if he pissed one off, you were screwed. I don't ever think he was serious. Just precautionary. But maybe, just maybe, he was right. This all happened a while ago, but I'm still shaken. I can barely write about it without my nerves acting up. Okay, so here it goes. A few weeks ago, my mom, sis, and I went to Colorado for an entire week of vacation. We were going to drive all over the state, visit parks and go horseback riding and water rafting, and so much more. I was excited, and I sorely needed a break from work anyway. We drove the 16 hours out there, and spent our first day rafting down the rivers. After an exciting day, we drove to a ranch house to go horseback riding. We got there at sunset, so it was too late to ride but we had all next day to ride the trails and see the sights. The ranch was... dumpy. All run down with scraps of steel everywhere. And the cabins we were staying in were in desperate need of repair. I swear the roof over the shack of the cabin was a giant piece of drywall with shingles strapped to the top. My sister and I thoroughly checked the place for spiders and bugs before we even thought about bringing our luggage inside. It was only for a night, I reassured myself. Just one night in a dumpy shack on a hard rock bed that probably had bed bugs under the sheets. I shuddered at the thought. My mom tried to cheer us up. She had brought a pack of giant beef hot dogs to roast over the communal fire pit. Happy to get out of the shack, my sister and I made a nice cozy fire. And soon a few other people from the other cabins came around and sat around the fire to roast s'mores and share stories. We talked about where we were from and where we were going, and our adventures along the way. Pretty soon the stories turned into tall tales and urban legends, the sort of stuff you would usually tell around a bonfire. That's when I spoke up. I loved stories, especially scary ones. And hey, we were out west. We were in Native American territory. Why not liven the place up with one of my favorite Indian myths, the legend of the Skinwalkers. Now, for those of you who don't know, skinwalkers are considered very evil, very dangerous beings. They were once humans who gained the ability to take the form of an animal by wearing its skin, usually through very dark and taboo magic. I knew all this and told my story. Who doesn't love a good ghost story? Everyone seemed to be enjoying it. I admit, I took some creative liberties with it. Really just retelling an old werewolf story but with a skinwalker instead. I bullshitted through a lot of the story and added a few things that weren't in the mythos at all. I gave our beloved frightening skinwalker wide crazy eyes with pinpoints for pupils with a matching insane smile. I made the skinwalker horribly misshapen with swollen joints and arms that were too long and legs that were too short and a head that never sat straight on its shoulders. I made it as terrifying as I could imagine. No one minded. They actually really liked it, and a man from Kentucky admitted the visuals alone were enough to creep him out. That's a victory in my book, if you ask me. And once I was done, everyone decided it was getting really late. Our firewood was dwindling, and it was a good time as any to turn in for the night. We packed up our stuff, doused the fire, and headed to our little shacks. I tossed and turned a lot, trying to fall asleep, but I couldn't get comfortable in that damn bed. A rock was probably cozier than that mattress, so against my better judgment, I got out of bed and walked about the cabin. I reasoned that if I stayed up late enough, I would be so tired that I would fall asleep no matter what I was lying on. I think I briefly contemplated sleeping on the floor. I wasn't that desperate yet. It was pitch black outside. No lights from any nearby street lamps. No car headlights. Hell, not even the cabin lights were on. I don't remember seeing a single star, but I shrugged off the shiver creeping up my back as simply the cold tile floor making me shake. I did find it odd that there weren't any lights at all on the property. You would think there would be a floodlight on the horse stables or on the main office, but no, nothing. 
This was really weird. I stepped outside in my flimsy foam flip-flops to get a better look. I could barely make out the ranch. For some stupid fucking reason, I decided to go walking around. Eventually, my eyes adjusted, where I could see well enough not to bust my ass. I paced up and down the road where the cabin sat and circled around the fence in the field where the horses were out grazing. Except, there wasn't any horses. They were probably in the stables for the night, I reasoned. I shivered again. It was getting awfully cold. I turned around to head back to the cabin. It was stupid of me to be out all alone at this obscene hour, and I needed to get to bed. But when I turned, there was something in the middle of the road. Its shape was swallowed up by the surrounding darkness. I could barely make it out. It was tall and thin. I shrugged it off as just a pole or something else, and kept walking. But then it moved. I froze. My breath caught in my throat, and I could barely breathe. I just imagined that, I said. It's just my imagination. I'm freaking myself out. Get your fucking head straight. It moved again. My paralyzed throat managed to squeak out a pathetic whimper. As my legs began to lose strength, I shivered violently against the coal that was building up inside me. My eyes began to focus on the impossibly dark figure that was standing against a barely visible sleet gray night. Now, I could see it. It was a person, but nothing like I'd ever seen before. Its arms were impossibly long, its legs impossibly short, and it had a torso that was too long for its rail-thin body, and a head much too big for its stick neck. Its right arm was sticking out to its side, swinging up and down. Its blockish head rolled onto its left shoulder, jerking and twitching up and down. It didn't move other than that, just stood there twitching, arms jerking up and down, head lolling around on its shoulders. I stood there like the dumb fuck I was. My cabin was a few hundred yards behind that thing, and I wasn't so stupid as to try to walk past it. My only option was to go around, behind the cabins and the stables, and hope it didn't see me. I forced myself to lift my foot off the ground to step backwards. My flip-flop made a wet smacking sound as it flopped against my feet, and I immediately froze in horror. It stood there perfectly straight, perfectly still, listening. I stayed as still as I could. My breath was shallow and panicked, and I tried to force myself to slow my breathing before I started wheezing. My heart thudded in my chest. My whole body was shaking, but I didn't move. Neither did it. I began to slowly bend over and slipped my feet out of those fucking flip-flops. My feet touched the dirt and the crumbly gravel, but at least now I can move silently. I spared a quick glance to the side to see where I was going. Two cabins were immediately to my right. I could slip between them with ease, as there was no visible debris between them. I looked away for a second. When I turned back, the fucking thing was gone. It was fucking gone. I knew it was there. It was coming from me. I was paralyzed. I couldn't move no matter how loud my head screamed to run. I heard something behind me. I turned instinctively, even though I knew fucking better, I still turned around. I was greeted with two bulging eyes, staring at me, unblinking, with two black pinholes for pupils, and an insane smile that stretched far too wide to be anything remotely human. My paralysis broke as I stared at the fucking thing. I ran. I fucking ran, crying my eyes out, trying to scream. But a horrible weight of my throat silenced me. My feet pounded on the dirt. I stomped over everything in my way. I even impaled my foot on a sharp rock. But I didn't care, and just fucking ran. I felt the cold creeping up my back. It was sinking right into my bones, and I couldn't stop shaking or sobbing. And I didn't stop until I burst through the cabin doors and deadbolted the lock and leapt into my bed. I huddled under the blankets, hiding my head, and there I grasped and shook for breath. I didn't sleep that entire night. I was too scared, but I couldn't get rid of that chill. All I thought about was that thing, standing there and twitching. Morning finally broke, 
and I finally allowed myself a breath of relief. Whatever I had seen had not come from me, and now that it was light, it couldn't take me by surprise. Mom noticed my bleeding foot and the blood I tracked through the cabin. I said I probably cut myself the night before while we were at the fire pit. I don't think she believed me, but she didn't push it. We left not long after that. As we left, I looked at the place where that thing once stood, and I shuddered again. But there was nothing. I assured myself, there was nothing. We said goodbye to the ranchers and to our companions. And I noticed the man from Kentucky who said he had thoroughly enjoyed my story. He told me again how much he liked it, said he was going to tell his own kids when he got home. They really liked scary stories, he said. As we drove away, his head rolled onto his left shoulder, and he smiled, a wide, insane smile, as he waved us goodbye.